FM, the source. Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I hope we never forget um, what happened in this world during World War II. Whenever I hear a story like the one we're going to hear right now, I think the same thing. I just hope... Because when I look at like old footage of like the Nazi soldiers just, just obeying this lunatic, oh, yeah. just, just walking uh, like, like crazy robots... What is that? What is that march they did anyway? It was so crazy. Or or, or lifting their hand like well, they could worship worshiping him. Or, yes. Oh my gosh! And and then to the, hear about all the all the people who were uh, the, the genocide that was being committed on, especially on the Jewish people. Um, let's see. Kim Kupperman is on the phone. She is a, she's been a teacher for over thirty years, an award winning editor, journalist, a writer for nonprofit organizations, and a community educator. And she's got a book called Six Thousand Miles to Home. It is a novel tri- uh, inspired by a true story of World War II. And uh, yes, and they 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 are escaping, only to be caught again by the Russians. And then, and I think they find finally find peace of all places, Tehran. Right? Is that, mm-hmm. Am I remembering right? Yes. Kim Copperman. Good morning, Kim. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Oh my gosh! And where are you right now? I'm in Clarksville, Maryland, which is close to Baltimore and not far from Washington D.C. Is the true story that this is based on a personal story? Is it from your family? No, it's not my family. It's another family, and I just had the very good fortune to be able to write this story. So, did you did you actually interview people to get the the, the back? The it's it's not a novel, but you've you've uh, you've got some places where you take liberties, right? You you fill in the blanks. No, it is a novel. It's a historic. It's historical fiction. And so, basically, what we did was, I interviewed many, many family members to get at the character of uh. the main protagonist in the story. And I did quite a bit of research, including reading hundreds of first-person accounts of what it was like to be in the places that they found themselves in, namely a forced labor camp in the forced labor camp system that became known as the Gulag in the Soviet Union. And so I did quite a bit of reading, and I did quite a number of interviews to get, as I said, at their characters. Wow. And they were in a labor camp for 18 months. And I I guess in those circumstances, you don't even know if you're ever going to get out or if you're going to die there, right? That's correct, and they were actually very lucky to even have received the news that there was a going to be the release of prisoners. So 1.5 to 2 million Polish citizens were deported into the Soviet Union during the Second World War, wow. and this is a very not known episode of the war, and only 10% of them came out during the war, uh, were evacuated, in fact, and they were very fortunate to have even had the news. There were people who were in far-flung camps in Siberia who never heard the news that they were able oh to gosh. leave the camp. So, you know, what is, is always so uh, hard to understand is how is it possible that Hitler declared war on, pe- on productive members of society? That's what I, I mean, his, his country could be better just by keeping these people in their businesses and in their homes and in their synagogues in this case. Just, but no, he decided they, they shouldn't even be alive. It was, it's just an amazing, crazy thing. That, and, and how many people bought that and decided to help him with that? It is just crazy. I hope it never happens again. Well, we all hope it never happens again, and that's one of the purposes of all of the stories about Holocaust-era 
events is that we hope they never happen again. Uh, you know, what happened, though, was that there was a terrible worldwide economic crisis. And um, you have to understand that Germany at the time, uh, in the 1930s, uh, the German mark was so devalued that it was something like a million marks to a dollar. Wow. Just to think about that, that the economic crisis was so profound. And into that, into that, inv- I'm not excusing anything that anyone did, by the way, I'm just talking about what made it possible. Right, so right. into that environment came someone with um, a lot of charisma and the rhetoric being that, well, these, this is who has caused this and we need to eliminate the cause from our culture. And that was a wildly popular idea. Mm-hmm. Nationalism uh, really was fomented you know, between World War One and World War Two, and one of the things that I think became very clear to me as I was researching this story is that nationalism in general rose out of World War One and in in Europe, and we have to think about what caused that. Yeah, that's a really so, really good yeah. point. Yeah, and uh, you you have to uh, fast forward then to the thinking of the present when uh, there are all these refugees that are coming across borders on countries all over the world, and the countries are trying to accommodate the refugees. Or not, as the case may be, right. uh, depending on what country we're talking about. And this, you know, displaced persons in the world now, we have a crisis. There are close to 66 million displaced persons, displaced because of war, famine, poverty, uh, weather-related events. And I think we're just going to see more and more happening. And to put that into context, after World War II, not during, but after, there were an estimated 40 million displaced persons in Europe alone. So just so you can kind of see, you know, population-wise, we're kind of at the same place as we were then. How did the you know, how did and there's the, no war going on. There's no there's no world war happening. Yeah. How did the characters end up in Tehran? And and explain what Tehran must have been like back then, as opposed to now. Okay. Um, so that's a two part question. I'll yeah, start yeah, with how they yeah, came yeah. to get there. So when when the Nazis invaded the Soviet Union, you know, uh, the Soviet Un- Union became an ally, and the Polish government in exile was able to negotiate the formation of a Polish army on Soviet soil. And so that's basically what triggered the evacuation of the 10% of the the 1.5 to 2 million Polish citizens who had been deported. And the general of that army was a very prescient and brilliant man named General Anders. The army became known as Anders Army. And he basically had he knew that Stalin was not to be trusted and so he negotiated the evacuation of this group of 115 plus thousand people to get out of the Soviet Union Hmm. and so they crossed Central Asia they crossed the Caspian Sea and they landed in Iran and then there were refugee centers that were set up in Tehran and that's how they landed there the There were three people in the family making this particular journey, a mother and her two teenage children. The boy went on to serve in the army, and the mother and daughter remained in Tehran. The daughter married the man who took them into her home, and she became a citizen of Tehran for close to 40 years until she was exiled because of the Iranian Revolution. So uh, what was Tehran like at the time, you asked? Um, I don't know myself, but I conducted many interviews with people who, you know, knew things about Tehran at the time. And it was a very wonderful time in spite of the war, in spite of the fact that Russian and British, uh, the Russian and British basically occupied the country, um, there was... um, a lot of European influence in the city. Uh, You know, when she came, when they came to Tehran, the mother and daughter, uh, they were very, very lucky to be taken in by someone who had resources and a beautiful home and who was very, um, you know, he was very well off. So 
they got to experience a good part of Taiwan. Wow. Um, let's see. I want to make sure people can get the book. I found it on Amazon. Do you have a website um, dedicated to yourself or to the book? Yes, there's a website for the publishing imprint. It's called Legacy Edition Books, and that's www.legacyeditionbooks.com. .org, and my website is kimdanacupperman.com, and you can find us there. All right, Kim Dana Kupperman, with a K, by the way, uh, both Kim and Kupperman. Uh, Kim, thank you for being on there with us. This is a, a story I really hadn't heard this one before, um, and, and uh, you're getting rave reviews. I was just looking at some of the reviews. Uh, Kim, thank you for being on the show with us today. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. We'll be right back.